Mm. All right, and again, welcome to October's Inbound Lunch Bunch. Today we are um, talking about creating personal digital experiences. I'm Suzanne Carowin. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at High Road Solution. And um, this is a fun one today. Uh, it's jam-packed, so we're going to dive right into it. I know normally we do kind of a um, things that are going on in the industry and things like that. I'm actually going to bypass that today because there's so much that I wanted to, um, as I really started getting into working on this particular uh, month's content, I realized there was so much that I wanted to say with it that I just wanted to focus on uh, the time on really giving as many examples as possible because this is really where all of our work is going. So if you work in an association, you're going to hear a lot more about this, I think, going forward would be my absolute projection. And then things that you had been focused in on is probably going to shift and you are going to start looking through the your association website, email, digital, banner ads from a totally different perspective, and that is from the perspective of being personal. So we want to start with talking about, you know, what does that even mean to start with? So let's dive in. Okay. So typically I try to go with some theory first, and then we look at examples, right? Kind of a classic um, lecture style format that everyone has told us that's what they really want from us at High Road. So um, professor I will be. Um, but today I think it's so vast to talk about this that it's better to start with examples first. So we get in it, we just get immersed in it to understand what we're talking about because that's going to help set us up to do the self-reflection that we need to do at our association to understand are we doing this now? Where are we now? Because really when we start talking about personal digital experiences, it's not so much that our digital needs to change, like you probably already are using Facebook and Twitter and email and your website, et cetera. So it's the channels you have in place, but there's something about the mindset that's not quite there yet. So we spent a bunch of time at High Road talking about the organizational mindset, talking about disruptions that are occurring because of the zero moment of truth, um, understanding that the user, the big you there, is the one that's got the power and so I thought that it would make the most sense and we get the most out of it if we immerse you with a lot of different examples to get you thinking and reflecting about what your organization now offers to see if there's something that you can do now. There's certainly going to be hopefully some short-term wins and then some longer-term pieces that you can start to build out as you realize we need to be able to use digital to attract new members, to be able to engage the members we currently have, things of that nature, right? So uh, most of the world has uh, agreed that, you know, we need to digitize everything, um, and that has big effects to it. And that is, does not mean in lieu of, though, live experiences, because those actually become even more critical. And we'll talk about that a little bit, too. And you're seeing that trend, and probably if you're a consumer, unless you never buy anything, you will see that actually that idea of having the personal shopper or having like an in-store experience where you're doing cheese or wine tasting or someone's trying to try to get you to try the new truffle popcorn. Whatever it is, people are putting more, people being brands, are putting more investment in the one-to-one -one interaction piece and even that needs to now bump up to a whole different level. And so what they're doing is they're saying let's automate whatever the rigmarole is that we can automate so we can get humans to be able to think again and be creative and get personal. So the question then becomes, what do we need to do on the digital scene? Okay, so what are kind of the sum total of examples of what can be the digital experience? It can be as simple as something like, and I'm sure you've seen this before, which is why I threw it in first, you're in the middle of using a particular piece of software. You're in the middle of a shopping experience online. You are completing a survey. You are trying to give feedback back on you know, you just used a, you just came to, um, uh, somebody just came to clean your house and they're giving you an email and they're saying, please rate us. And they're using kind of the smiley face scale, okay? This small little piece here, you might not have thought about it, but it's giving, it, it's a win-win between association and individual. And while maybe you're not using this any, as much as you could be now, maybe you should think about, maybe you should. Because the benefits of having any type of interaction where it's one-to-one -one between my brand entity, 
in this case the organization association, and the individual user is an opportunity for me to get valuable, valuable feedback from them instantaneously, in the moment. And ideally you want to be able to collect that feedback while the event is still going on, while my experience is either super fresh in my mind or I'm actually mid-experience. And so starting to use, to view your entire interaction portfolio, if you will, as this constant exchange of value between organizational entity and user is something that we have to start developing as a discipline and as a mindset. So we're not trying to build a website and launch it and put it out there for three years before we look at it again and we just keep pushing information up there. We're not seeing email as a vehicle where we just push information out there and then the user, it's on the user to figure out what's good or bad. We're always trying to have a very high level interaction with the user where at all times that user is driving the experience and we've got a win-win two-way communication channel. That's what everyone's going for for having a digital experience. And so if we're going to have a two-way a digital dialogue, if we're going to have a relationship, I, the user, have some power there, and I, the organization, need to respect that power, okay? So it's kind of going from the mindset of thinking, you know, what if they call, to thinking about, wow, what if they don't call? Like the worst thing you can have at your association is the phones not ringing, or people not emailing you back or people giving you no indication about how what they feel about anything, all you're trying to understand your membership is based on did they renew or did they register, and you understand at a very superficial, artificial level what transactions transpired, okay? That's not a very deep understanding about how do they feel about it? Are we doing a good job? Are we, where are we on the scale? Are we awful? Is it brilliant? Were they in pain when they were trying to register for the annual meeting? Did they feel good about it? Are they excited? Now we're getting into that behavioral world where that's what we're trying to do because, see, we've got the function down. We've got to move past it. All of us in the association world, we've been on the web for more than a decade, more than a decade. Come on, it's 2015. Most people put their first websites up in the 90s, okay? So we've been doing this a long time. We have the functionality up. The AMS cart is there. Things are functioning. Now we're moving into a world of optimization. We're moving into how do we delight? How do we do it better than the other guy? How do we stay top of mind? How do we make people feel something when they're with our association? And shouldn't it make sense that they're feeling something, considering that most of the time they've voluntarily committed to some sort of relationship with us, and now we're in the hard time of having to stand in front of the mirror and do some self-reflection to say, are we standing up to our side of the relationship, right? Do we really have as much of a relationship going as we can? And if we had to self-rate our own digital, you know, where would we fall right here in this continuum between awful to brilliant? And most of us are good. I mean, that's where we are. But again, good doesn't cut it anymore because lots of people are good, right? And now the consumer has access to all this information. They have a lot of choices they're making. Their money can go a lot of different places. Most people aren't sitting around with just excess cash saying, oh, I, you know, what else could I do? They're not really cutting you a break. We know about tertiary competitors. All these brands have set the expectation, and consumers are very smart, skeptical, right, and a little bit snarky. And so to stand out, we have to keep upping our game as to what we can do with this. And so today we're going to talk about what are some of those things and kind of who's, who's doing something interesting and then, you know, what are some things that we could avoid. So even the interaction piece, if you've ever filled out a little survey with the, with the smiley faces, that's a real-time interactive piece that you could probably plug into your website tomorrow to get a sense of what's happening, right? So I'm giving the user a really a good chance to tell me how they feel in that moment. It's easy for them. It's not asking them to fill out a survey. It's one click and done. Okay, so it's, it's a win-win for us. I understand you want my feedback. I'm willing to give it, or I can opt not to because I'm the user. I've got the power to do that. But again, many people will do that, and then you get a, good, you get a better extra data point to say, how are we doing? Are we doing this right? Because if you start seeing that people, as they finish registering for a conference, feel like it's awful, well, that should be a trigger point for you to go back and say, we probably need to assess this, right? Because awful doesn't connote additional uh, revenue coming in the door. And, that, you know, that's the best feedback you can get, 
right? So it's kind of like if you're in athletics and they say, you know, you don't learn anything through winning. If everything is brilliant, it's very difficult to get better. So getting data back that's actually telling you here's the places where you can improve should not be seen as a negative. So we shouldn't be scared to ask. This is one of the things I've always seen with associations that don't really want to do member satisfaction surveys. You're twisting somebody's arm to actually do it. And it's like, let's just do it once every other year. They don't really want the feedback back because they don't want to really hear what they're not doing well. But like if I'm in a corporation, that's exactly what I want to hear because I want to understand where we can improve. Constant, continuous improvement, right? Always. And so again, as you work in the digital longer and you work with data, if you're in a data-driven organization, what you find is that emotional piece of it, the things where like we're bad, we didn't do a good job, that stuff falls by the wayside and it becomes very scientific and clinical. You know, what did we do right? What can we improve? And there's no further value connotations than that, right? It's not somebody's fault. It's not like we didn't do a bad job. It's not like the members don't get us and they're always complaining and we only have so much money and it's not because so-and-so you know, she won't change it, and every year she does the same thing. We get rid of all that political um, stuff that's always in the association world. We can get rid of it if we turn data-driven and we start focusing in on what the data says and we keep remembering it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about what I like. It's about what my user is telling me that they need, want, or I can perceive that it's something that would be good for them. That is a very different mindset, and that's very upsetting. That's the big disruptor. That's that zero moment of truth. Very upsetting to many an association professional, but that is the disruption that needs to take place, and we have to restructure our business around that mindset because at the end of the day, they're the ones who are paying. <laughs> so we have to start our strategy, and then we have to look at that and understand where are we going. So this is a nice little litmus test, really easy. I just thought I'd start with that. All right, what about other things that are digital experiences that you might not even be thinking about today? So when we did our big study for the 2015 State of Digital Marketing and Associations, we try to find out how many people are using email preference centers. Sadly, it's only turned out to be about 40% of our survey uh, participant base um, that we're actually using a true email preference center, not just a global opt-out, which you have to do legally but I mean actually expanding it out so that the preference center is emphasis on preference, not on permission, okay? It's on preference. So yes, I have to collect, you know, you have to be able to give them the ability to opt out. You have to be able to collect certain information if you're working with, you know, uh, if you're emailing to Canadians and things like that. But why not actually spend time developing this page to make it a preference center, and it certainly it doesn't even need to be email, it could be well beyond that, it could be all your preferences, digital preference center, the DPC, and here I can be able to give my choices. So again, if I'm trying to design a personal digital experience, the user, the intent of that, the absolute premise is that the user has some ability to give feedback back. They have to be able to click on something and do something. It's no longer understood as a passive relationship. We're always trying to find ways that we can interact with this user. So whether I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about them on their phone, or if I'm sitting here thinking about them at their laptop, or wherever they are, we're always thinking in my user experience strategy, how are we interacting? At what touch point can I ask for more information? What choices can I give them? How do I constantly be a digital concierge to say, here's other things that you probably didn't even know you could do? Okay? Because again, the whole premise is that I'm trying to help the user. I'm not going to make the user work for it. Okay? They don't want to work. I don't want to read your newsletter and try to decide what's actually relevant to me. That's too much work. Okay? I've got too many other things going on. If you're going to make me pay you and then you're going to make me work for it, that's not a good relationship. Okay? If I'm paying you, I want you to be helping me. I'm paying you to give me some sort of value and so to help me to focus and be the best me I can be. Okay? That's kind of like today's thinking. It's not the same thing as like 
kind of what it used to be where I should be so thankful that I get to be a member of your association that I pay into this and whatever you deem as a member benefit is something that I should also agree to. See, we're not in that world anymore, right? We, we don't do that one anymore. It's, we're in the, uh, you know, uh, we're in the post-Kardashian era of like what's in it for me and you have to show me that social proof and I have to buy into it. Okay, so it means you have to do the facilitating and some of the curating and give me choices. And from choices, I can say I'm going to take this one, this one, not this one, etc. Just the way when I go to Chipotle and I decide what I want in my burrito bowl, I'm not getting what they're telling me. I'm getting what I want. Okay, so we're in that type of world now. So an email preference center, as simple as this might seem, gives me a plethora of choices and options that I can show this particular user, here's all the ways that you can interact. You tell me what you want. You want to get this now? You want to get information on programs, but you don't want it on research? That's fine with us it, because it's about you. You want to subscribe to the SnowSource blog? We'd recommend you do it on a weekly basis, but by no means are we going to lock you in because it's about you. So you tell us. So even an email preference center, I can then turn around as the association and my job is to market the email preference center to let people know here's where you can decide your preferences, right? This is for you. We created it for you. You tell us. You tell us and we will then honor your preferences and let you get what you want. That's, again, a huge mindset shift. So instead of saying, we are going to dictate to you what information you get, we're saying, and, and we're trusting the user to say, you're going to select what's going to be good for you, and if we do a good job with that, you're going to like it and continue to value it. Now, when I go to unsubscribe, right, another little personal digital experience. So let's say I did click on global opt-out. I'm like, yes, no sports industries in America. I know everything you're telling me. It just, it's like, it's just not a good time for me. You know, I could have hit a pause button, but I just, I have to, I, I want to go. And so they've even taken this small thing that is a technical, legal piece of it to make sure that they put in a personal digital experience. This modal pops up, all with their look, and they'd have a very compelling piece of copy header to say this doesn't have to be goodbye, explaining what you're going to miss out on if you really hit this button. So before you do it, this is kind of like a, are you sure you want to do it? I'm just trying to help out a friend here, right? Just want to make sure you understand what you're about to do in case you weren't. And also I'm doing a psychological piece with them that I'm reminding them that this is our value. Our shared interest here is about snow sports. So it's not just about email and getting email. It's about, are you sure you want to break off the love here? Because this is how we're communicating love between us. This is, our, this is our thing, okay? You're ready to break up with me. So even small things like that can be a nice touch point for a personal digital experience, and they've done that quite well. Here's one of my favorites. This is Electronic Retailing Association. Even their big graphic for their, um, for their actual event is a personal digital experience. So let me ask you this. When you think about your images that you're putting on your website or out on Facebook or into your emails, are you thinking about them as being personal digital experiences or are you thinking of them as being decorative? They're decorative to break up text. And your text is really about two lines about trying to hide the fact that you're just trying to sell to them. So you put in this fluff text, and then really what you want is to put in the link to say register or buy or, um, you know, or to join or renew or things like that. And so then you throw in some images around it to kind of like make it look better and break up the text. But at the end of the day, with our snarky, sarcastic, very incredibly sophisticated consumer of today's world, you have to ask yourself, if I had to use a smiley face scale and ask, who are you fooling, right? Where would you lie? Because it's very obvious now when we know when we're being sold to. We get, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ads coming at every one of us every day. Okay? So most of us ignore it. You know, we have an attention span less than a goldfish. We've got like two seconds. So if we have to start thinking about our imagery being a digital personal experience, that means that I need the right image, I need the right copy on it, and it's got to be in a way that's going to resonate with that particular user, which probably means it's not the same image for everyone. Right? That's when we get into those personas. So what image is going to appeal to, let's say, our millennial? What image is going to be able to appeal to the first-time home buyer or the first-time business you know, owner? Let's say you have a trade association. 
We have to take those things into account and do more time in spending trying to understand and craft these personal experiences. So for electronic retailing, they actually are bold enough to say, if you're still standing at the end of three days in Vegas, damn right you deserve an award. Very punchy, very provocative. Everybody laughs when I show that. It really resonates. And for their members, they love it because their members are hardcore kind of marketers. This is the language they use. This is like the the feeling, I mean, they're called the Moxie Awards, so you've got to have a little chutzpah for this, right? These people, that's how they see themselves, so they've just had a great personal digital experience when as soon as they even see the graphic, because it's saying to them, you get me, you get me, and they're like, yeah, you're damn right, all right, we're going to do this thing, because that's who I am, okay? They made me feel something. If I'm feeling something and it's the right thing, my happy little button, if I said, hey, what do you think about our graphic? You know, did that make you happy? They would be like, brilliant, because that's what we're going for, right? And so you can think of that little happy, um, you know, the actual smiley face scale or the face scale, I should say. I'm going from frowny to super happy. You could be thinking about that, using that at the back of your uh, mind all the time to say, how would this persona react to this? Is this going to be the right personal digital experience that we're talking about. And again, I can already hear a naysayer out there going, that's great, Suzanne, but we don't have time to do that. We can only do one thing and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you carve out one persona and you make sure it's for the group that you're trying to grow or really keep, you're taking the time at least to craft that one experience for something. And then what you'll do is, Part of this is a mindset, and once you get used to it, you can start rolling this stuff out much faster. But we're so not in this mindset as a whole. Most of us are in the factory mindset of, I can only send one email newsletter, so I have to write it to be as blasé as possible because I don't want to offend anyone. I don't really want to engage anyone, but I'm just here to get the message out right? Like, that's not my problem. All I have to do is market my event, and that's the only thing I'm responsible for, okay? That's the mindset that's driving associations into a bad state, right? That's where we can't go, because that is in a stasis mode, and that's not helping us to evolve, okay? So right there, that's the uh, that's a rip the Band-Aid moment off, but that's what we have to say. So when you say, I want to grow, or we need better engagement, but you're not willing to do the other hard work and, and update what you're doing, well, don't be surprised when you don't grow and you're not engaging, okay? Because the stuff is just not really that marketable to that particular you, whoever that user might be, all right? Here's another example. So here's some other kinds of examples of personal digital experiences. This is on Society for Neuroscience. So if you look at the bottom of their, um, this is on their journal site, you can see that there's this little blue pop-up here that's showing me a piece of content that Erin is a whole um, method out there that they have in a whole series of toolkits and whatnot. But if I'm a neuroscientist, I know what that is. So I'm looking at this thing at the bottom, and this, is, this has actually been interactive, and it's popped up at the bottom of my screen so that I can um, understand, well, what else is there? So already I've got interactivity. Something moved. Right? We're at this point, we're all like, squirrel, squirrel. You know, like we need things to happen for us because no one's sitting around just, you know, spending three, four, five minutes on your website to try to make a decision where to go. Okay? Maybe once they've gotten to the full content, they're ready to sit down and read it. So we got to get them there. And one of the big problems that we have in the association world is that we've spent a lot of time in our life guarding our content. Now we find out, like, this is a, like, this is rich. After 10 years of gaining our content and making it members only and saying that only members get our newsletter and only members get to go behind the password protected thing that we spent tons of time and money putting to make single sign on across all of our applications, now you're telling me, Suzanne, we have to ungate some of our best content to attract new people and that we should probably have a non-members newsletter so we can actually gain new email addresses because we can no longer buy email lists. And that's what I'm telling you. That's exactly what I'm telling you. So one of the problems that we have from an interactivity user experience side of the house is that for most of us, our really good content is behind a single sign-on, right? It's behind a password. So that's a problem because that means that as, an, as a website that I've spent a dozen years collecting content on, I'm relying on the user to either find what they want through navigation, 
through the search box, or probably if you're realistic about and looking at your website statistics, you're probably really finding that the way that people find your content is through your email newsletter. So, because most people just don't pop into your website every day like, huh, you know what, I wonder what Society for Neuroscience is doing today. Like, I wonder what they have on their website. Most people aren't doing that for your association. Most of them are prompted to return to the website because something has prompted them to do this. I got a piece of mail. I got an email. I saw something on Twitter. I was already on LinkedIn and you posted something. I saw a banner ad. Something has prompted me to return to your website. Right there, you better know where that's came from. You need to know where the source is for all your website traffic, and you should be designing that because that's part of the user experience. But once I get here, now I can't abandon them at the front door. I can't abandon them, right? And one of the problems that associations have is that they have to rely on the actual user to find additional content that they might find helpful. So what Society for Neuroscience is doing is they're using a uh, content kind of widget from Bright Infill, and they're being able to make intelligent content recommendations even for content that's been password protected. Okay? Brilliant. So I'm already looking, let me just back up one. I already looked at this. I'm like, I need to look at Aaron. What's this about? I clicked on it. It's telling me it's password protected, but I know it's there now. I know it's there. Now I want it. Now I'm incented to take the step to go through and go through the password protection process to do this. And if I'm a non-member, I'm like, oh, they have stuff here. I want to be able to get to this. Now my interest is paid, and I'm already, without explaining it, that if I was a member, I would get this content. So it's done a huge service for me, this little interactive widget. It's indexed all my non-member content, and then it's making intelligent recommendations. So it knows what content I was looking at, and it can then match up through a whole algorithm by synonyms and all these keywords and all this magic that happens behind the scenes. And it's pairing me up with other content that's going to serve me well. Now the website is being this digital concierge to me, and it's actually helping me. I'm getting, I'm like getting the Kardashian treatment, if you will. Like somebody just make it happen for me. I don't have time. Obviously, I wanted to get on this, you know, the website knows I'm trying to get a look at Aaron. So what else you got? And so it's working for me, okay? A brilliant kind of use of things that are a personal digital experience that now technology can do for me, right? All I did was I plugged it in, index all my content. It's starting to now track the user behavior. It's making the technologies now finally giving me a value add. The staff's not doing it. The user's not doing it, right? And I'm able to collect the data for now what they tracked. Now I need to understand do I have better engagement on my website because I've put this tool in and I'm seeing all the pieces behind the scenes about what's popular. Now we have a win-win between association and user. Now we're getting somewhere. And that's a really nice example. And then kind of just as a final one, if I actually scroll up, scroll up to, the UR, you know, to the URL bar, like I'm about to leave, SFN is popping up a, another modal, just like we kind of saw in Snow Sports. You're going to see a lot of big modals coming, and big is the way we want to go. Big. Think big. And it's giving me, again, more information so that it's giving me recommended content, okay? So maybe, like, I didn't subscribe to the blog, and as I'm trying to leave, it's like, hey, you know what? If you like this, go ahead and, you know, hit this one button, and we'll sign you up for the blog, and we'll keep this good stuff coming, you know? And it's like, wow, that's nice. I didn't even know I had that. Yes, I want that. Absolutely. I want to be a better me every day. So you just keep on sending it. Now I've got their consent. They've actually taken an activity that I can see. It's digital. It's personal. I'm liking this, right? Happy, smile, brilliant, looks good. We like that type of win-win. All right. Okay, on the email side, which is all of our favorite mode of communication, that um, there's also great ways that you can uh, be able to design these personal digital experiences. So this is Associations Now Plus from ASAE. And so um, if you don't get this and you don't know about it, this now is the time to uh, know. So one of the things that ASE does is they built this customized newsletter where you control the experience, okay? And the technology, again, does the heavy lifting for you. So if you can see right there in this big box where it says customize, right? So that comes to me. And if I go to customize it, I'm actually going to be taken back to my profile that's going right into my association management system in this case. And I'm able to do, again, my, my, um, all of my choices for which newsletters do I want to get. You know, how do I want to do that? And then I also get to say, 
when do I want to get my Associations Now Plus custom newsletter? And I'm saying I want it weekly or I can get it daily or monthly or things like that. But again, who gets to drive that experience? Is it whoever is fighting to be on the email calendar on Thursday at 1 or is it me? Like, do I care as a member what's going on with how hard it is for you to make email for me? I don't care. I don't even know. Like, what? Like, what? you know, just get, I want the content, okay? So I want the content the way I want the content. So I want to be able to say I want it weekly, right? The system, the technology should be able to understand when I'm actually consuming that content and send it to me accordingly. We have the data. It wouldn't be hard to kind of put those two and two things together and understand that, like, Sending me an association newsletter at 1 in the afternoon on a Tuesday is not likely that I'm going to open it because I'm probably getting off a call or starting a call, right? I'm doing so, I'm actually working. But if you send me my association newsletter between 6 and 8 p.m. at night, well, my goodness, I'm probably going to read every inch of it because I'm probably sitting on the sidelines at some children's sporting activity and I got nothing but time. And it's like a great time for me to focus. So let the technology help you to create those personal digital um, experiences, but give them the choices. You gotta let the user drive the experience and then use the data to continue to get better about how do we make it more personal? How do we help them? What can we do? You know, well maybe if, if she's sitting there at between six and eight at night on the football field, maybe we can be sending out more stuff. Maybe she's got more time. We can have more in-depth stuff to read. Maybe that's the time to give an ebook. Maybe we could ask her, do you want to do a self-assessment? But that's the mindset we're trying to get into. All right, so if we keep looking at that from the way that ASE tries to do that, they're taking in dimensions. And this is a kind of a, a term that I want to make sure, like a concept that we cover today. Because we're trying to understand our user, our people, from as many dimensions as possible. So we certainly, within the halls of our association already today, have some set of demographics. We certainly, that's one dimension. We certainly already have transactions, second dimension. We probably already have, maybe we have topics or areas of interest, third dimension. We might know um, maybe some relationship data for them, like how are they connected to the company? How are they connected between, maybe we know where they went to university. Fourth dimension, relationship type of stuff. But then there's other things we want to know. Maybe, again, we want to know those preference, the choice data. Fifth dimension. So we want to get to those fifth dimensions and, again, allow an interactive tool where the user is driving their experience and they're helping me help them. Because my job is to facilitate as the association. That's my job, right? I'm serving the membership. I'm serving the mission. So here what ASE does is they've actually broken down even further, brilliant, brilliant, click on that button, all of their topics and then said at what level are you in, as it pertains to this topic. So introductory or new, you know, rookie info, you are a practitioner of it, you're applied, or like you've really nailed this thing, you're an expert. Because see, myself as a CMO, I don't want to get an, an article on like the basics of HTML because I passed that 10 years ago, right? I want to talk about the whole next level. So I'm understanding that ASE gets that, right? They're not trying to like get one over on me and make it seem like they have good content, like they've got good content, they got enough content to break it out by and they understand their content and they understand me and are respecting my level of experience or expertise in different areas, okay? So I'm already like, I'm loving this association because you're getting me, you're getting me. And I've got choices and like I might be um, strategic on one side but when it comes to something else, I don't know that, that well. That, isn't that normal? Of course, we don't know all of our topics the same but I want to learn more about that one. So as it's sending me maybe more introductory information, at some point it can say to me, like, hey, you've gotten a lot of this introductory. Uh, you know, we think it's time for you to go to applied. You know, are you with me? And just all the user has to say is, yes, I want more advanced content, like one click, right? One click feedback, but we've worked now as a partnership to help me get to be the better me that I'm trying to be by being part of your association. Okay, so Associations Now Plus, they even do more things. So let's say I've chosen my content links, I've chosen what I want to do. Even my subject line is what I'm showing you here. They're making use of that subject line to tell me what's going to be in that content. So the top, so as I'm vote, I'm actually using that same scoring card, if you will, that other fifth dimension, as a way to vote for what I'm, is most popular to me. 
So if I fill out like the entire section of marketing, when I get my newsletter, marketing is going to be the top subject because I voted the most for that topic. I'm showing I'm the most interested in that. So that when I come in and get my newsletter, even the subject line is being pulled from that first article. Okay? A little personal digital experience. So my subject line is different than your subject line. My content in my newsletter is different from yours. Why? Because we're not the same. Right? And I'm trying to – my intimate relationship between me and my inbox here of my email is for, it's about me. Right? And ASE gets it. They're trying to make me better. Not everybody. I'm not, I don't want to feel like I'm one of a crowd here. I want to feel like it's me and ASE, and ASE is taking care of me. Like they've got my back. They're going to help me get me content that's going to help me in my daily job or, you know, profession or what have you, and it's going to help to delight me. I'm going to like that. I'm going to become more dependent on them. I'm going to start to really enjoy getting my, you know, weekly uh, newsletter when I've decided I want to get it, and I'm going to then hopefully start to tell other people because that's the big kind of piece of that. So here's what my uh, my personal newsletter looks like. So I'm, I've been on this big like um, human resource kick because uh, we do a lot of work of understanding that we're missing a lot of skills right now in the association world and talent development is where it's at and understanding, you know, how the um, – when we come in and we disrupt with digital, um, the, hard, the hardest part, it's not the technology anymore, it's the people part. So we need to spend a lot of time on the change management piece and the getting buy-in and how that works and um, how you actually work with people and now the level of resistance. And I'm sure you guys are all well familiar. It's probably not shocking to anybody on this phone that um, associations are not the quickest to say, yeah, let's, uh, let's make change a, the norm. Um, whereas, again, you know, I'm coming out of the software world and change and tech, in the technology world. Change is absolutely the norm. You know, everything is agile methodology. And you're seeing, of course, that influence come into um, all organizations now, and they're all understanding that we can't – the goal is not to sit and stay. The goal is to constantly evolve every kind of day, right? What did I do right? What can we improve? Okay, so even within um, the ASE newsletter, the education um, courses that they're offering me, you know, at this point now they're selling to me, right? Okay, so I get that, but that's okay because I got my content that I wanted first. So I'm like, all right, you know, what's in it for me? All right, what do you got? Okay, but even with the what do you got, so I'm more open to them selling to me now, and I get what they're doing. They're being transparent about it. That's good. I'm not trying to hoodwink them. But even the, the uh, courses that they're showing me, they're actually crafted to me. So there are things that make sense to me, and it's based on my profile data, what I've attended in the past, right, what's going to be perhaps geographically even possible for me to get to. I'll tell you, as a marketer, there's nothing that drives me more crazy than I get an email for some fabulous-looking digital marketing conference, like, and it's, the conference is going to happen next week, and it's like you're in a last opportunity to register thing and I find out like the conference is in always in San Francisco and I'm like yep cannot possibly jump on a plane and get there you know in two days I hate that so it's not actually being relevant to my geographic location and being something that's feasible so they're taking those things into account that helps that personal digital experience that's great what about even like buyer's guides? Maybe you haven't thought about those as being personal digital experiences, but they are. They're an interactive piece. Maybe you haven't thought about this one in a while. But like what are they doing for the user? Is all the work on the user? You know, is it all about you? Did you put up the buyer's guide because you're just getting the money? You know, or is it something that's really helping them? Are you marketing it? Are you making it easy? Are they getting something out of it more so than just this kind of passive thing sitting there where the expectation is like, the user can do it. And maybe this is a good time to say that this do-it-yourself model that's been so in style for the last decade or so, right, is not in style anymore. The do-it-yourself thing, yeah, not so much. People are really willing to outsource now. And we see it from our association clients because it used to be they just wanted to come to us and get, you know, um, get services. I mean, like get, a, get the actual, like, here, we just want a block of email message, and they want to do it all themselves. Now they're like, no, we don't want to do that ourselves. Why don't you do it? Right? We need some real experts to do this. And outsourcing is back in. And you can see that across the board, no matter what it is. The outsourcing is definitely back in. The big skill gaps have really increased. People just don't have the time. Right? We're, cu we're cut down on a million things. So um, that's a big piece of it. But the buyer's guide idea, that when it first came out, I remember putting buyer's guides into uh, association websites in 2000, 
and it was all about the do-it-yourself. We can have our website because they can come in, they can get their own information, they can download their own receipt, you know, they can see their past course history, they can view their own certification credits, and um, that do-it-yourself uh, piece, you've watched the engagement like drop because people don't want to do it themselves, they just want you to do it for them, okay? So if that's what the personas are saying to you and your, your um, attendees and registrants, members, donors, you're seeing that behavior because we're all overwhelmed, then step into it and say, great, let us be the facilitator, let me be that concierge to you, how do I bring that to you, okay? And so maybe I need to then say, look, in the buyer's guide, I need to include that piece into my newsletter. I need to say, here's the top things. I need, maybe I can sell it as an additional sponsorship. I might have to actually do more newsletters or more email or whatever to combine together all the things that are happening in the channels because I understand people aren't going to find it unless I am helping to guide them, okay? So already it's changing. Some other examples. This is at pay. So another little digital experience. So I can get a, um, a text message, right, and I'm able to go, in this case, I can donate directly from my phone. And again, it's a, it's a very low disruption piece of it. I've obviously had to opt into getting that, but I can do it with one click, okay? Personal digital experience made it really easy for me. The bottom one you're looking at, you can actually embed a payment button to do like a, basically an Amazon one-click pay right even within my email. I mean, I can bypass the whole shopping cart experience your website and not remember like, oh gosh, what was my member number? I have to log in with my unique member ID of like 145065 and my password. And then I have to go through look up member number and look up password because I don't remember because I don't come to your website all the time. I'm actually able to have a personal digital experience here easily. I've made it about the user. Okay, they just want to buy the web the webinar, one click and I'm done. Renew and done. So being able to put those things in makes a big experience. Speaking of that, this is going to be super hot for 2016. Time to relook at e-commerce. So if we're talking about personal digital experiences, what more than when you're actually ready to spend your money do you care about? So the user experience during your whole checkout process is probably something that what I'm hearing with um, our clients is they haven't looked at in a long time. And so people are now kind of coming back and saying, if I'm looking at it not from a functionality standpoint, like I know it functionally works, at some point after the user has gone through their seven steps to return their password and log in, and we've really made them work to show how much they want this uh, thing that we're selling, at some point, you know, we, we've gotten the money. We know it functionally works. It deposits into our merchant account. We see these things happening. Nobody's stealing our data. Great. How do we optimize? And that's where we are now. So, again, you know, Amazon certainly spends a lot of time doing this on e-commerce. seems to work out for them. So if you haven't looked at that, something to think about. Have you looked at your digital experience on your shopping cart in quite a while? And then even with that, this is something you can probably do more easily than updating your shopping cart, but why not just take a look at your transactional emails that are coming out of that, your receipts. Look at your email receipts and ask yourself, is there a better way I can do this? This is my short term. What could I be doing today to put into like between now and the end of the year so I'm ready in 2016 on some other kind of note? So I crossed out what association this is to uh, – to protect them, but um, this, is a, this is an association email receipt that I received. Um, nothing is inherently wrong with it. I got it. Now again, there's no better time as a point of purchase to be able to be able to cross market or to make somebody feel something than when I just made an online purchase. So all of us have been trained and are looking to see this email come into my inbox to tell me this transaction was successful. Even if the website says it, I do think it's a generation thing. Um, I don't know. I'd have to like survey the millennials to see if they feel the same way. So I'm speaking probably for uh, Xers and Boomers. But we've been trained to look for the email, right? Did it go through? I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting registered. I'm trying to buy my product. I need to know that this thing worked because I'm going to need my whatever, login details, travel details, et cetera. So I'm totally focused on that email. I might squirt up for a second, but I'm still looking for it. If I don't see that email receipt come in in a reasonable amount of time, it makes me very worried. I start, I don't like that. I don't trust you. What's going on? I know that I should see that right away. It's like when I hit password reset, I expect to see that thing instantly. If I don't see it and you make me wait for your password request thing, or like it says, oh, a member services representative will get back to you on Monday. Like, are you kidding me? I'm frustrated. I'm going to hit the bad, the bad frowny face. 
Okay. So I've made my purchase. I get my order, and I'm number thank you order for nine zero zero four two three five six four two. I get that, and it's showing me. Okay, great. Here's what I purchased today. It's as clinical as you can possibly get. I mean, I guess they threw in blue so I can see the product description. Hopefully I'm not colorblind. So again, nothing inherently wrong with it. Did they deliver information to me? Of course. But did they miss the opportunity to fully engage? So then they add some text in to make sure that, because, you know, maybe the user is stupid, to let me know again to, I, so that I can access my membership benefits that I have to set up the profile using my customer number. I'm not even a member. I'm a customer at this point. I thought I was joining an association, right? Now I'm a customer. Now I'm using their internal language. And then my first issue of my subscription of my magazine, I get in four to six weeks. Well, who doesn't love that? Because I'm like in an instant world. Four to six weeks? I'm like, oh, come on. So then I can get, I can now, the work is on me to click here to print a receipt for your order. And then, then they tell me, please note the receipt for orders, the products will not be available. So you're telling me what you can't do. That's, that's how it resonates to the user, right? Now, if I have any questions, now I can go ahead and call them, okay? And, but only during these certain hours, all right? And so then they just put Eastern time, okay. But now they're looking forward to serving me again soon. Okay, so from my perspective, what did I just get in my purchase? I just gave you money and I came away with nothing, nothing. I came away with work that I have to do, four to six weeks to wait, and I still have to do more work to go set up my profile before I, I get any benefits, okay? You can see how much opportunity there is to do a lot more from creating digital personal experiences right away. How come the first email I, did, I get is not like this big, beautiful thing saying like, you've done great, you're a rock star, awesome job for joining, we're so excited to add somebody else of your caliber to our association, right? So that would have been helping me move my uh, smiley face scale up towards brilliant, right? And then why aren't they just sending me, that? like, I, I don't get it, like, why aren't we getting more stuff here that I can be less disruptive and less work. Like I'm already thinking like this is not going to be a good relationship. Like I, I had to pay on the first date. I had to show up myself. I had to figure out how to get there. You know, it's just, it was a lot of work. So we're not setting up the user to already be, this is my first interaction. So I'm already skeptical. I'm already saying, man, you're not designed to work with me. You know, you don't, this is not, this is going to be all work on my side. Okay. Just another example of like a missed opportunity and how much you could do. So when people especially are doing things and associations fall into typically, unless I have to go to your associations to get certification credits or I'm legally bound to do something, most associations I am voluntarily becoming a member mm -hmm. or my, my organization as a company is voluntarily being a member and it's in the nice to have wallet bucket, meaning if I have to cut it, I can cut it. But I want to do it because I want to, I have some passion for it. And so anytime you have something where there's a passion for it or you understand really why they're a member and what the psychology is of it and there's any sort of spark of passion, we should be able to take that and expand it and make sure we're constantly coming back to the passion. That's what Snow Sports did really well just with that graphic. Right, just coming back to the passion. What's our common interest that we have that we love together? You, the user, me, the organization. In this case, you're looking at my confirmation email receipt again from my ticket purchase to go to the 2015 Men's Lacrosse Championships, okay? Clearly, you can see, uh, I'm probably not gonna go spend my Memorial Day weekend, um, uh, I'm, spend, I'm choosing to spend it for a good amount of money uh, watching men's lacrosse. I, I certainly know this is a passion point right off the bat, right? So they should be profiling me. They should have some idea. And this is what I get back. So I'm excited. I just bought into an experience, right? And the email I get back is like, here you go, dink, and that's it. Nothing. What happened to the passion? I'm really deflated. Like maybe I think nothing and I just think good. It's, it's functional. But I miss the opportunity to be brilliant, right? This is how people can feel when they're trying to go and register for your annual conference. They are buying into an experience. So if the email receipt you're getting back is functional, you already missed the mark. Because you're trying to set up this experience journey, if you will, that's going to culminate at the height of it when they get on site. But we need to think through that whole journey, okay? If they're buying into a webinar, 
anything that they're buying into that's an experience, right? You've kind of missed the mark because you're in, in buying, the, buying into memberships and experience. And so if you're not really investing in that, that's a problem. Let's look at an alternative way. And again, this is hard to find associations. If you got them, send them in. We'll, send it, we'll share it with the group. On the other side, here's an example from my own Yahoo inbox um, that uh, my son was just, um, they went to register and they tried out for, again, lacrosse. Clearly, I do a lot of lacrosse. Uh, they went to do this thing. And they tried out, and I'm now getting the email in my in my inbox to say you need to now um, pay us a, a lot of money to be part of this team, and you accepted the selection. So they sent me an email saying your son has been selected. Do you want to take it? Yes or no? Very one email. Yes. Now I get the next thing to say thank you for it. And the the purpose is is it still an e-commerce transaction. Look at the subject line. Jackson's registration confirmation. I'm freaking out. This is my kid, it, right? It's not even for me. I can't mess it up. I don't want to look at his face and find out I forgot to make the email. <laughs> I forgot to register him for the team. Same thing if you're registering other people for events, right? You're looking for them. So the fact they put in that person who's really the attendee, if you will, name first, helps me out immensely. Also helps me to delineate between him and the other kid, right? So one and two, I need to make sure I've, I've taken care of both. But the better part, and they're telling me again very upfront what it is, registration confirmation for, and they told me the year, 2015, this is it. That simple thing as a subject line helps immensely for things like annual meetings, your membership. I can go back and look through my email and look for that, right? But they already say, thank you for your acceptance. The fact that they use preview text just to start with thank you makes all the difference. When I open up the email, Super simple email. All they're trying to say is we got your money. But they took the time to put back in the header graphic, as simple as that is, so I visually understand what it is. I again say, oh, yeah, that's pride in that. That's who we belong to. We belong to this club. This is now our identity. And then what's even better is they said, thank you for your acceptance. We look forward to a wonderful summer. Because you know when this team happens? I did this in like August. You know when the team actually plays? Next August, next May, next May. It's a year in advance, much like when you're asking people to register for your conference, like a year in advance. So there you go. August 17th, um, we did the registration. The kids not can even play till May. Okay, so you better thank me because this is a lot of money up front for me to do a promise of an experience, and you've helped me out by reminding me this is why I'm doing this. Okay, it's very simple to imitate for your own conferences. Last kind of thing of other examples, Associates does this, and uh, as having now, you're going to start seeing a lot more of these kind of interactive pieces, like do you have calculators? Do you have like a benchmarking report? Do you need to say like, hey, how do you, you know, if you had to do a career planner for you, you know, your time as being a CPA, you know, here's an interactive tool that can help you plan when you need to do what there. Let's say you have to get your certification credits. You have three years to get them all in. You could do a planning tool to make sure that you're helping along the way, and you could have like a little indicator showing how far, you know, a little toolbar saying where are you in the process. Matter of fact, that piece, New Jersey Society of CPA is doing that, putting it right into the email. So it's making these interactive personal digital experiences to help the user engage while we're going here, and we're getting some sort of value out of it. You're going to see a lot more of that. Hard to find examples of this in the association world. Really easy to find it in the uh, for-profit world. And you're going to see more and more of these types of tools coming up. Okay, so lots of ideas already. So what about creating your own personal digital experiences? So this is now a recap. We know these numbers to be true. We believe our friend's word over what the organization is trying to push us, right? So the value add or the brand recognition and the word of mouth thing is where we need to go to. We know that birds of a feather flock together, okay? We know that we need to focus in on having a persona and that that needs to be how we target because birds of a feather flock together. So if I can find her, I can find probably people that are like her who also would like what we do, right? It's like this is how we're all thinking now. That's why personas are so important. So we have to then say, how do we get people to recommend? And as you can surprisingly come up with, we have to give people a really great experience that they themselves first believe in. We're back to the you, right? So they have to be able to do it themselves. So we have to ask this question. Wharton Business School said 35% of shoppers have had a wow experience in the last six months. 
But in order to get to the wow, in order to get to brilliant, they had to deliver on 10 touch points simultaneously, okay? That's super hard, <laughs> super hard. And so I pulled this phrase out, um, also from this guy's at Wharton, because people's expectations are really high. So they're not really expecting to be delighted all the time. The expectation is going to be good, and that's where we are now. We're expecting good. Because, and then we're going to complain if we don't even have good. That's going to be the more common thing, right? But so to get them to that delight thing also means we have to change some stuff within us as the association, meaning we have to be far more realistic about what we can actually do. So while we want to delight, we have to understand this isn't a quantity game. And what we need to do is when we do delight, and that's why we need those touch points, we need to glom onto it, and we need to praise, praise, praise those people and find out who was excited and then how do we get more people like them. Or we need to promote the fact to say, hey, you know what, this thing we did last month, 87% of people loved it. So being able to take your own content back, your statistic metrics back, and push it back into your membership actually helps you to create better personal experiences. So the realistic expectations you're now seeing, that's why you're seeing new metrics that are really focused on impressions, reach, cost per engagement, and time frames. We're understanding we need to have a longer time frame and look at someone's user behavior. Okay? This again leads us back into everything we've been talking about today. The association mindset, in order to think about how to create a digital personal experience, we have to be far more like a producer, a curator, a host, than that we ourselves have to push. Okay, we're not supposed to be like the strict mom. We're supposed to be the producer. We're there, you know, we're Maria, you know, we're, um, we're Andy Cohen. We're sitting here trying to figure out and like highlight the pieces that are happening in the membership and help you to be a better you. Right? So we're trying to do that. That's more the mindset, and we're trying to entertain. Okay? Probably haven't been thinking about that. So as we wrap up, these are some of the tools we want to think about, about what we need to do next. So we now, as an association, want to create our own personal digital experiences, then here's what we need to do. We need to go back with our new fresh eye that we just came from today and look at all of our digital portfolio that we looked at, from um, email to our website to our e-commerce receipts to all of these things we talked about, and we need to look at it in context for how that buyer would think about it, what that persona is thinking about it. We need to reassess our content from an enjoyment point of view, that's POV, from an enjoyment point of view, and then we need to look at it also to say, how interactive is it, right? Are we allowing the user to drive the experience? Do they have any opportunity right, to be able to talk back. And what's ironic about that is since I'm lecturing you, I'm just going to note the irony right there because you would think this would be interactive. When we started Lunch Bunch, we wanted it to be this two-way dialogue, but everybody said they just wanted me to lecture them, so we're not being interactive. Hopefully in 2016 we can go to being interactive and um, having more kind of workshop style, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't miss having the irony of that, of that situation. So we need to look at our digital portfolio. Number one, we need to start thinking of, about all of our digital as a portfolio and not these separate entities like, well, they do website, we do social, they do. Number one, it's one thing altogether because it's about the user. And then look at, about it, look at it from the content enjoyment perspective, the digital interactive perspective, et cetera. So last couple examples. What else could you be doing? So, um, uh, Mark Jacobs did the best, uh, did this whole promotion through and using selfies and having people self post back. Okay, this could be out there. Are you the new face of Mark by Mark Jacobs? But why couldn't you say, are you the ne are you the new face of our association and have all these people contribute? Okay, interactive thing, personal digital experience that you can be able to do something with. This is Beats by Dr. Dre. They did a whole thing on solo selfies. So show us your your selfie with you and your Beats and be able to do that. Why couldn't you do that for your conference as well, right? So like you're going to, you're the association of CPAs, why can't you have selfies generated about how you CPA, right, and have it do something else with it. So starting to inter interact and think about those ideas is where we're trying to get you. Some other ideas, and you're going to see more of this coming into our world. All of these kind of self-benchmarking tools, online planning tools, matchmaking tools, you know, hey, me as the association, your profile looks like these profile. Do you want us to connect you to? Wouldn't that be a great member value? You got all our data. All we have to do is opt in to and say yes, as I'd like to find a mentor. I'd like to be matched up with other people like me in your vast 3,000 person membership association, right? I'd like to find a company like me that's not a competitor. 
whatever. You know, use those types of programs, but it's the mindset of being the facilitator, and you can do it through technology. You know, using Instagram, you know, using calculators, all these things are just other ideas that you can do. So again, here's what associations are now doing. I don't know anybody who's doing selfie contests, but I could be wrong about that. Somebody, I'm sure, is for their conference. But what you can do today, really look through and take a hard look at, again, your digital content from the enjoyment point of view, um, adding in um, personas, looking at it from the interactive type of view, looking at rewriting headlines like that, you know, you're damn right, you deserve an award, things that are really punchy, changing up your transactional email receipts, all these things can be real mm -hmm. quick wins about helping to create that personal digital experience. Remembering our whole goal is the you, not about the association, not the A, it's about the you. Whoever this persona is, that's what counts. We need that persona, we need her to be happy. We need her to be looking at moving from good to brilliant on our smiley face scale. That's all we have today. Everybody, thank you very much. Do good work. Make today great, and we will see you in November. Not to, not to uh, one last thing, November 13th, we have a live event in D.C., so if you're anywhere near around, come join us, and we'll do a lot more of this type of uh, talk. So everybody, have a great day, and thanks so much.